Hi, I'm Mike, and I'm here at the 2018 Hackaday Super Conference, and I've caught up with Sam Zalouf. How are you doing, Sam? Great, how are you? I'm doing really wonderful. I, I'm so happy that you're here, and I've followed a lot of your work for a couple years, um, and it's just fascinating because you're making uh, silicon parts in your home laboratory. Yeah. So how did you get into that? Well, that project was kind of a natural extension um, of my other projects, you know. Uh, I've been really lucky my parents provided a workshop for me at home. So I've always been taking things apart, building things, you know, how everyone else learns. You learn by doing. And that was me. Um, this was kind of just a natural progression of that, and it's gotten pretty out of hand. <laughs> So I think the first ones that I saw uh, were transistors, and uh, uh, what's the process for building a transistor? So making a transistor is uh, pretty simple actually, and Jerry Ellsworth was the first to demonstrate that at home, which is awesome, because I saw her videos and said, hey, this is actually kind of possible to do at home. And that process is pretty doable, you know, we have to be very careful of uh, safety, but there's not a whole lot of equipment you need um, beyond some simple chemicals and, and things like that. And by no means it's easy, but you really have to know what you're doing and it, it takes some time. So fast forward like a year from there and you've stepped up your process to be able to use a lithographic uh, fabrication process for differential right. amplifiers. Yeah, uh, so most this is what they're doing in industry. Yeah. yeah, it's basically what they did maybe in the early 1970s. So <laughs> it's the same style of techniques, techniques that's going on now, but nowhere near the level of you know, modern fabs today. But it's a scalable process. So as my tools get better and as I buy more stuff off eBay, and as people in the community start to get in on this and try things for themselves, this process is scalable. So we can make more and more complicated devices at home and hopefully try some new things. So you were actually working on this while you were in high school. Uh, was this completely extracurricular? Or did it tie into some classes you were taking? Yeah, it was totally outside of school. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm continuing to work on it. I'm staying busy. Um, okay. So yeah, as you know, I'm a, a fresh freshman right now at Carnegie Mellon. Yeah, going to Carnegie Mellon. So what yeah. are you studying there? Uh, likely electrical engineering. Okay. I haven't really declared yet, but that seems like a good track. So um, you're not tired of uh, uh, fabbing, uh, <laughs> following that rabbit hole yet. Uh, is is what's the next goal for you? Uh, I don't know the next goal, but <laughs> whatever I do, I want to keep building things, keep learning things, uh -huh. keep sharing it. You know, that's what I really love doing: building things and learning about new topics and going to new depths. So I would think that uh, the processes you're using are really more chemistry based than uh, than electronics yeah. based. It actually is a lot of chemistry. You're right. Yeah, and that's the cool thing about. This project in particular, but also a lot of projects like this, it's a little bit of everything. You know, I got into this, learned some chemistry, learned some physics, learned some optics. You know, I am not even close to an expert in any respect <laughs> in any of those topics. But I learned a little bit of everything, and that's really interesting. You know, it, it always stays interesting. There's always more to learn. Well, yeah, I think one of the barriers for people um, in getting into something like this is looking at it and being like, well, maybe I can make some transistors, but I can't do the whole lithographic process at home, and they just immediately take out the opportunity. Did you have your doubts and just go forward anyway, or were you naive? Like, like what was the mindset when you started out? Yeah, I definitely was a little naive. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of funny, but uh, in a lot of ways in this project, but uh, things worked out. You know, and I, I worked really hard, kept pushing through things, but, uh, you know, I, it took a lot longer to progress through certain steps. You know, there's a finite number of steps it takes to make a chip. And some steps that are very simple, such as etching or, or depositing this layer, it took considerably longer than <laughs> I ever would have imagined. So I was slightly naive to it, but also like there's no harm in trying to learn something. So, you know, there's a cost to learning something. You can buy a book or you buy an electron microscope off eBay and you know, maybe it doesn't work, maybe your your Arduino product doesn't work, and you might get discouraged, but that's what it takes, that's the cost of learning. And if that's all it costs, then it's pretty good. Uh, so this is your first time at Supercon? Oh yeah, I'm loving it. What have you seen so far? It's excellent. Well, I um, just spent the morning in a couple talks and been spending time out here talking to everyone. Uh, it's amazing, <laughs> you know, everyone here could give a talk and I would love to go to it. It's just so many brilliant people, amazing projects, and I can't wait to come back next year. I can't believe this is the first time I've gone. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Well, I think, uh, you know, we've got a big party tonight. We're going to give out the Haggerty Prize in a whole nother day tomorrow. Um, uh, but for now, I better let you go get ready to give your talk. Yeah, thanks. All right, thanks so much. Good to <laughs> see right. you. Yeah, you too. Thank you.